Hey everyone, welcome to the next video from section 9.2. So in this video, we're looking at how we can figure out trajectories for our autonomous systems. Um, it's going to turn into a first order ODE. We can try to solve it. If we can solve it, they give us an easy way to figure out what the trajectory looks like. If we can't, then we can't. We'll just go back to our parameterized way we had before. But this gives us a little trick that if it works out nicely enough, we can figure out what these trajectories look like just by the ODEs themselves. So let's go ahead and just look at it real quick and do a quick example of that procedure. So we want to look at a way we can use to sort of figure out what the trajectories of our system look like, even if we don't want to solve it parametrically, we'll be able to solve it explicitly. So we're looking at something where we have dx dt is some function f of x and y, and dy dt is some function g of x and y. Now if we look by the chain rule sort of properties, we know that dy dx is going to be dy dt divided by dx dt. You can think of this by canceling the dt's, or if you actually work through your chain rule, you'll see this is what you end up getting. But I know what these two things are on the top and bottom. This is g of x, y, divided by f of x, y. And this is a first order ODE for y as a function of x. So if we can solve this, we get equations for our trajectories. And how we end up solving this, normally this is going to be nonlinear. So our ideas are going to be either by separable equations or by exact equations. And that's what you can do. You can try to solve this equation to get you an idea of what your curves are going to look like, and you can just implicit plot them to get your answers that way. Now I'm going to do an example of this in this video. I'm going to save the other types of examples that you in the book um, for after 9.3 when I'll actually show how we could find those. When it says it looks like there's a saddle point here, well, we can actually find out that there are saddle points at that spot. And we can look, and we'll wait till we get through 9.3 when we can actually do that before we come back to those examples. So I'll do an example of this real quick with the trajectories, and then we'll move on to the next section. So the example is this one. Say we have the system dx dt equals negative 3x squared plus 1, and dy dt is 3x squared plus 6xy. Now if we write out the dy dx by dividing the two, we'll get dy dx equals 3x squared plus 6xy divided by 3x squared plus 1 with a negative sign in front. And now I want to try to solve this. So, so let's clear the bottom to the other side. 3x squared plus 1 dy dx equals negative 3x squared plus 6xy, and then add that to both sides. So I end up with a 3x squared plus 6xy plus 3x squared plus 1 dy dx equals 0. And if you check, this guy is exact. So we can solve it using exact equations, and what we get is that our solution, general solution is x cubed plus 3x squared y plus y equals a constant. So this implicitly gives us the curves of our trajectories, or in this case we actually solve this out for y on its own to get y as a function of x for our trajectories. x cubed plus 3x squared plus 1y equals c, so then y equals c minus x cubed over 3x squared plus 1. Either of those give me curves that set up the trajectories for my problem. So if I were to solve it numerically with just using the functions of t, they would trace out curves that look like these guys. All right, so that's the entire point for this one. It's just, it's just the way you can do this and the way you can use this sort of method to figure out what the trajectories look like to give you an easier way to plot them if you can solve the equation. So that equation in general, the dy dx equals g divided by f, that'll likely be hard to solve. But if it works that you can solve, it gives you an easy way to figure out what these guys look like. All right, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.